We are in a state of emergency. Prejudice. Wrote a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind. When I get up in here, everybody, I'm fucking this nigga up, everybody. I'm tired of these niggas, man. I'm trying to work, do my thing, and niggas are clowning me and fucking up my career, everybody. I can't live like this, everybody. These niggas gonna have to die, everybody. Keep fucking with me, everybody. Keep fucking with me. Keep fucking with me, everybody. Keep fucking with me. Keep fucking with me, everybody. Keep fucking with me. The war has officially started. I would suggest to this troll, you better leave me the, the hell alone. It's on and popping. Peace out. Keep fucking with me. Everybody keep fucking with me. Keep fucking with me. Everybody keep fucking with me. Scared the fuck out of me, everybody. I'm just sick and tired of these niggas out here fucking with me, everybody. These niggas are fucking with me, everybody. Keep fucking with me, everybody. And I'm tired of it, everybody. Cause I keeps it real like that. I keeps it real. Please cannot purchase some tickets. Welcome to Circus, Mississippi. The funniest thing of all, what? First and foremost, I have to announce today's main attraction, Sniffy Soul Brother, Sniffy the Clown, and Sniffy comes today 
amongst the people of Mississippi, the entire population to tell you that you need to join this campaign. <laughs> Hey, how do the people of Mississippi feel about this? Follow up behind you, Negro. <laughs> oh my God. Now let's let us turn over the microphone directly to uh, Brother Smith so he can make his case as president of the state of Mississippi. <laughs> hey, man. You said, you said this thing all night. You said this thing all night. I don't get this day all man. Uh, 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 and my name is, 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 is Myron. They call me Sip. My name is Ma Myron Johnson. They call, they call me Sip. They call me Sip. They call me Sip. And, um, <laughs> We just watched a video by uh, Brother Craig. Many of you probably familiar with Brother Craig. And uh, I guess he got angry at me because he was on my live stream and he made a comment saying that the Ku Klux Klan will not allow the Mississippi campaign. <laughs> and of course, my response, and so brother Maurice Muhammad was in the chat room. Our response is, ain't no cracker gonna stop nothing here. And I began to, 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 to say and tell Craig that uh, that must be the problem with y'all Pat African. Y'all cowards. Y'all a bunch of yellow back. Y'all a little bunch of sissies. That's why you can't get nothing done. So I guess a response, <laughs> he made this video about me, which I find amusing and funny, actually. And the only thing he really done in making this video, trying to make mockery of me, is that he really continue to show and verify everything that I say about uh, Pan-Africans. And Pan-Africans have no honesty. Uh, I've donated $700 worth of equipment to Craig, and now he turns around, being the ingrate and the thief that he is, he's gonna use my own equipment to make marketing. Didn't use the equipment at all, to help me. None of his Pan-African friends gave him a dime to do nothing. And he gonna turn around. And these are the people that love black folks. These are the people that care about black people. Look, we get, look, I can get, look. We get called nigger from Pan-Africans and these pro-black folks more than we do from the Pecker Woods. I know we do. And these are the ones that love us. I care about my people, I love. They call us Sambo and Coon and all this stuff more than the people would ever have. And they do it with love. They do it, it's out of love. Uh, I know uh, God in Hollywood talk about people like dirt. I'm doing it for your own good. I just listened to Alquan 
Alcoa had to make an immediate response to Sister Noble's words this evening. And he made a made a video about her. And he called us crazy, whatever. Okay, so if I'm crazy, and if Sister Noble is crazy, all these people talk about y'all lunatics. What does it say of you and you following us? You right there in the chat room with us. You can't stay away from us. What does that say about you? Because I know if somebody loony crazy, I don't want to be around them. But here you are. Listen to every word, following, wherever I go, there you go. What does that say about you? Huh. Now what it is, you think that you're smarter than we are, and you're not, and you'll never be. I don't go on your channel. The only reason why I talk about any of these people because they are stalking and harassing us. Because there are other people I know that don't give a damn and hate my guts, but they ain't, they're not around. So if you're, following a, if you're following an insane person, what does that say about you? I want to be fair to them for a moment. And I want to say this. When I first came to YouTube, I came to listen to Black Conscience. I came to listen to Minister Farrakhan. I came to listen to uh, John Henry Clark and uh, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson and Dr. Ben. I, I never even knew who these people was until social media. I didn't know who Dr. Clark was or uh, Dr. Francis, Francis Cress Wilson and so many persons I had no intent to make any video, just be a listener. But uh, I began to get attention by my comments. And that's what first started, people start messing with me because of my um, comments. And then I decided maybe I should make a, a couple of videos because my experience in mental health and my whole attitude had changed as far as I, as my looking at black conscious, this blackity black concept. And my experience when I was locked up caused me to rethink and revamp and re-examine everything that I ever was taught, from Christianity to Islam, to all these ancient Kemet teachings in Africa. I had to rethink all of that because in the cartoons, when a character has an idea, they put that little light bulb above their head. And that's what happened to me. And the little light bulb came on in my head when I heard Pastor Ray Hagen say, Jesus never historically existed. And when he said that, because you know, these, the, all these religions are interconnected, the Abrahamic religions are connected, and Jesus is part of all that. But if Jesus never historically existed, it blows all that stuff out the water. And if there's something wrong with that. There might be something wrong, wrong with everything that I ever been taught. And the main thing that had happened to me was I called for this God and this God never did nothing for me. That's what really messed me up. God never. I was so desperate. I called for the devil. I said, look, devil, whoever you are, you can have my soul. I'm willing to get, I'll be the best Satan worshiper ever in history. Get me the hell out of here. I don't mind giving you my soul because I'm pretty sure hell is better than being in here. And the devil never showed up. I had to rethink everything 
that I was taught. There is no devil. There is no God. There is all this stuff is a damn fantasy lie. So when I came to YouTube and I'm listening to all this blackity black stuff, I'm questioning everything. And I decided to make a couple of videos to try to see if there was anybody else that was thinking the way I was thinking. And I come to find out I'm not alone. I'm not alone. It's not a lot of us, but I'm not alone. And the thing about it is, people will call me an atheist, but atheists don't like me either. <laughs> they don't like me. Because I'm not an atheist. If I'm going to embrace a title, it would be a realist. And atheists are not realists. You want to hear some of the fantasy fiction crap that they be talking. They're not real either. So atheists don't like me either. So when I came to YouTube, I did not want to be Nation of Islam. I did not want to be a Hebrew Israelite. I didn't want to be like what's, what's already saturated the airways. I want to be somebody different. And then the title of the ministry came into my head, The Reality's Kingdom on Earth. That was the original title. But I didn't really like that word kingdom. So I replaced kingdom with temple because I was used to going to the nation of Islam temple. So it was The Reality's Temple on Earth. And of course, I am I am influenced by the Nation of Islam. That's why I spend a lot of my time. That's where I come from. So it's the Reality's Temple on Earth. Now I thought, I thought, and you probably do too. When you listen to Nation of Islam, when you listen to all these people, uh, the Hebrew Israelites, the Christians, whoever you listen to, one of the main things that they try to sell you on is, I represent the truth. That's what you were here. We want the truth. Give me the facts. Now, of course, if you believe, you don't need any facts. Either you believe or you don't. Belief does not require facts, but they, they still will ask you, I want the facts. So here on this platform that I call Reality's Temple on Earth, we do the best that we can to be real and bring you the facts. We want whatever we present to be able to pass the criteria of logic, common sense, reason, and being able to analyze. You can't get no more truth than that. And what you bring to your platform, Sister Noah, and maybe you may not have noticed this, but when you talk about the Anunnaki, and when you talk about space and dimensions and things of this nature, oh, they want to eat that up. But when you start talking about, I want to be free, I want to be liberated, you notice they start backing away. They don't want to talk about that. but they want the truth. They're not interested in truth. They are interested in being comfortable slaves. And I know who you are. That's why a lot of people don't like me. I know who you are. I live with your mindset for years. People that was locked up with me talking about, I want to be free and whatever. No, they didn't. They were institutionalized. And the only thing they wanted was, could you put me an extra biscuit for breakfast? That's all they care about. Can I get an extra cup of coffee? Because even when the Pecklewood said, it's time for you to go, 
they would do things to sabotage their release because they didn't want to go nowhere. They was institutionalized, and that's how we are. You don't want to, you don't want liberation. You are happy just the way that you are. A slave, a comfortable slave. You just want an extra biscuit. You just want to be able to talk. And like the sister said, really, it's never going to happen. Because if you want that, you got to take that. And you're not brave enough to, to take it. You talk black supremacy, but you're not man and woman enough to take it. Because the man on top say, you got to kill him and you ain't bad enough. The man on top said, you got to be smarter than me. And you ain't smarter than him. So you just want to be comfortable by converting some naive, non-thinking people to your slave plantation so you can feel like black supremacy exists. Black supremacy does not exist. It's just an ideology. It's just a thought. That's all it is. There's nothing supreme about it. And it did not exist until we had what we call white supremacy, white racism. And that does exist because it's backed up by power. It's backed up by words. It's backed up by gun and nuclear weapons and all kinds of stuff. And if you ain't bad enough to challenge, you need to sit your happy ass down. Matter of fact, you are down. A bunch of losers. So you, you angry at us because we want to continue the fight to get off the slave plantation and you're comfortable. We want to run away and you want to snitch to the slave master. You want to put obstacles in the way to stop us from running so we can keep your cowardly happy ass comfortable while you run in your mouth because you don't want to do nothing. Here we are. You even say out of your mouth, you ain't doing nothing. If we're not doing nothing, then why are you here? What are you trying to stop if we're doing nothing? But actually we are doing something. Because the first thing in war is propaganda. The first thing is war is a message before a bullet is even shot. There's a message. And that's what you fear. And the stronger we get, the weaker you're going to get. Anything we build is going to make your base even weaker. Because now the people will see something tangible. Now the people will see that what you're doing and how you think and how you're moving is a road to nowhere. Our coming into life means your death. That's what you're upset about. And the same way that your deceit and your fairy tales and your mythology has charismatic speakers, articulate speakers, why shouldn't real truth have good speakers, articulate and charismatic speakers, representatives? That's what you don't like. If I was on here, you wouldn't bother. But since we can express our truth, the reality, just as good as you can express your lies and your mythology and your your uh, 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 fairy tales. And that's what it's all about. There's only two people in this world. There's no middle ground. Either you're real or you fake. And y'all fake. And you're a bunch of frauds. I told the troll, this grand pooba that's in the chat room, 
And let me look at at the chat room. Now I asked him. He called us a losers or, or whatever. I can confess I'm a I'm a loser. No big deal. So what? All right. But nobody have give given me millions of dollars. Nobody have given me their time and their labor. But you and the crowd that you run with, you give these people millions of dollars every year, your time and your labor. And I tell him, since 2010, and this is 2021, long before a Mississippi campaign, what have y'all accomplished? Absolutely nothing. And that's why they angry at me and us is because we're holding you accountable. And you're angry at us because you because you would tell us, well, what's your solution? And we got something for your ass. It's logical, it's reasonable, and it's on time. And now you're really upset. It can work. Our ancestor was already doing it. So you're not making market of me. You mark, you making market of the ancestors you claim you love. And I want to say this and pass the mic. This faceless troll, Alquan, hard cold, whatever he want to call himself. D. Durrell and Guy Nollywood Jr. Y'all such fools. And God Nollywood already know this. I don't know if D. Durrell know. Alquan do not like God Nollywood. D. Durrell, God, uh, Alquan does not like D. Durrell. He does not like Pan-Africans, period. It's not a secret. But you stupid falling for this trick by this faceless troll as long as somebody says something negative about me, you jump on board and sooner or later y'all going to get into it with the troll because this troll Alquan don't like Pat Africans. He don't like Umar Johnson. He does not like the red, black, and the green. The troll says that he's some kind of Aboriginal, whatever. I don't know what tribe the troll trying to claim, or he's some kind of Native American, whatever. Bogus. What tribe you trying to get with, Alquan? What Native American? Show us. Show us your customs, your roots. You just as bad as the people that's, that's African. You ain't no damn better. You can't show your connection to no Native American. At least they show a DNA test. Where your damn DNS, DNA test, Alquan, to show that you related to some Aboriginal? You just as messed up as they are. So how are you going to make mark of anybody? But Alquan used D. Durrell to get at me. And Alquan uses God Nollywood to get at me. And he hate both of y'all. This is this is known. It's not a secret. Alquan does not like Africans. Alquan does not like people from the islands. If you come from Jamaica, Barbados, Haiti, or whatever island you come from, Alquan hates you. Alquan don't like you. If you're not some kind of aboriginal, aborigine, Alquan do not like Africans. He do not like people from the islands. It's not a secret. But in order to get to me, he'll pretend and slide his happy ass under you because you're so stupid and full of hatred. You let the troll use you and next thing you know, like a rabbit dog, he'll be biting y'all happy ass. Go look at his videos. He don't care about no African. 
or people from the islands. He made mockery of both of you. And you, and that's what I was trying to tell D. Durrell when I was in the chat room. You letting this troll exploit you. The only thing you have to do, the only thing God and Hollywood have to do and D. Durrell have to do is bring him on a panel and talk about Pan-Africanism or Dr. Umar. You will see. Because he's not into that African stuff. But it's all about trying to bring us down. Get me. All my haters will get together. It's, you know, it's amazing. We don't even have nothing yet. And they're trying to get us before we can even get off the ground. Because we do carry that truth. Because we are real. Because we represent reality. Aqua offers nothing. What is your plan? Have nothing. The pan is supposed to have a plan or, or whatever. It's not working. That's not my fault. That's not my fault because it's not working. Again, including Minister Farrakhan, since 2010, this is 2021, what have the black conscience, including Minister Farrakhan group, which is the biggest out of all y'all, put all you together, what have you done, what have you accomplished in 11 years? The reason why there's a Sister Noble, the reason why there's an Angel Snubbed Up, snubbed up Seven is because y'all not getting the job done. That's why. And you're doing yourself a disservice. We have never come on here and told you you should not be an Aboriginal or you can't be a Pan African. We never said that. We said we need to pool our resources together, find common ground, because this Mississippi campaign, all these ideas can go under one roof, find your place so that we can move forward. Attacking me. It's not going to help you. And if you were really sincere, that's what you would be doing. But you're not sincere. You are about black supremacy, African supremacy. You're just like your father, the devil, the white racist supremacists, and you want slaves just like they had slaves. But you ain't, but see, you can't make Hebrew Israelites talk that stuff, but you can't make them no slave. Uh, you talking about some God is going to come and, and do whatever. But you ain't bad enough to make no slaves out of. Matter of fact, you keep talking that crap. They will put your happy ass into slavery. Because they got they have the power. They don't have to run their mouth. All of you will mess around before you close your eyes. Be messing around and be on a, on a, pl a plantation again. That's what will happen to you. This is not no game. We want to change this condition once and for all. We tired of this. These. Uh, 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 it's going to happen in 10 years, 20 years. Uh, I heard a brother talk about, well, brother, we was we was enslaved for 400 years. It's going to take a lot. I know I don't want to hear that. That's because you don't know what the hell you're doing. When somebody working on your car, they can give you a pretty good time when your car is going to be done. And then they're going to say, give me my money so they can go. But a person that really don't know what they're doing, damn, man, you done had my car for three weeks. You told me the job could be done in three. Well, you yeah, man, things come up. You know how it go. Man, things come up. Uh, my wife just had a baby. Uh, I work overtime at the job. All kinds of excuses. And that's what you hear in this blacky black how come y'all don't have nothing? Well, uh, the white man, uh, that's the that's the main excuse. Uh, the white man, uh, like Brother Craig was in my live stream. I, I guess that was yesterday I did the live stream or the day before. Brother Craig said, the Ku Klux Klan not gonna let y'all do no Mississippi campaign. What? This is 2021. 
don't give a damn about no Ku Klux Klan. You thinking about who gonna stop you? Fight for yours. When this peck of wood came to America, do you think they sat around talking about the, the Native Americans ain't gonna let us do such and such? Uh, uh, the, 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 the grizzly bear ain't gonna let us do such and such. The mosquito, they don't think that way. See, you, you think you're a loser and you want us to be loser like, like yourself. So Grand Poopa said, it seems as if your excuse are those three guys. I don't care about those guys. Just talking. The train continues to move. They the ones with the problem. And people need to know who and what they represent so they can avoid people like that. So you can be a winner. Misery loves company. These men support something they know have accomplished nothing. And they want you to get on board with them to continue the nothing. Grand Puba, put a video, show us your accomplishments from 2010 to 2020. He's not gonna do that. He's just gonna keep talking nonsense. Show and prove you have nothing. You don't expect nothing from me and Sister Noble because you gave us nothing. So you shouldn't expect nothing. You give Farrakhan thousands of dollars. You give Umar Johnson and Tariq Nasheed and all these folks thousands and millions of dollars every year. And what do you get? And you have the nerve to get angry at me because we hold them accountable. Give these people something. You keep taking, give it to them. How are you going to get angry at us because we demand accountability. And you too damn stupid. Because they give you a good talk, a good show. That don't mean nothing. But again, you're not serious about your liberation. You comfortable, happy slaves, and you just want extra biscuit on your plate. That's all what it's about. And you are angry, and you get upset, and you're jealous and envious because you wish you was like us. You had, you was brave enough, strong enough, had the tenacity to fight for yours. You wish you was us. And as we get stronger, you get weaker and will eventually fade out of existence. And that's what needs to happen to you. It's time for our liberation. It's time to hold people accountable. And if I take millions of dollars from you. If I take your time and your labor and I'm not producing nothing for you, you hold me accountable. Matter of fact, you don't even have to hold me accountable. I will do it before you can get a, a chance to do it. Just do it. I will hold myself accountable. Because the people deserve better. They deserve liberation. And I'll pass the mic on to our sister uh, Karen. Sister Kara, where you at? Did she go to sleep or something? <laughs> well, I'll say this also. I may disagree. With Pan-Africanism, I may disagree with the church. I may disagree with uh, whomever. But I am not actively telling people, you never heard me say, do not donate to the red, black, and green. How many times have you heard me say that? Have you, have, I've never, you never heard me say, don't join the Nation of Islam or the NAACP or the Urban League. I never said don't donate to Alcon. You never heard me say those things. You never heard none of us try to sabotage folks. And but that's what they do. 
and they have all these questions for us, but they don't have all these questions for Umar Johnson or Young Pharaoh or Tariq, Cynthia G, Michi X, and all these people who have taken thousands and millions of your dollars were all these questions. Where are all these questions? Now, Aquan do. Aquan does question a lot of these platforms. And he try to sabotage them also. But see, the thing about it is, if you can dish it out, then you should be able to take it. The same question you have for me, Aquan, you should ask yourself the same thing. Because you're asking for donations to do what? What do you what do you want donations for? To do what? And Sarnetta did give Alquan an opportunity to talk about his solution. I wish I could find that video because I would play it. Sarnetta. So Netta said, look, I'm going to give you your 15 minutes of fame. What should we do, sir? And Alquan choked up. He couldn't even explain nothing because he has nothing. And he's jealous of all of us who do have or offer something. So his purpose is to sabotage and try to make mockery and humiliate. Sister Noble was on his channel supposed to be there to promote a book and he allowed people to uh disrespect her he allowed them to do it so he can say it, it wasn't me no it was you because you allowed it just like cuckoo cutter the last time i was on his platform it wasn't me matter of fact he even put their mockery and their hate on his screen it wasn't me. It is you. You let these minions do your work for you. And you pretend like you don't have nothing to do with it. It is you. I'm not going to invite nobody as a guest on my platform and get abused. When that woman, as soon as she came on, start cussing Sister Noble out, she should have been cut off immediately. It's not like she giving you any money because when we go look at your gun folk, go fund me, whatever the hell it is, it's the same, it's been that way, the same stuff for, for years. Ain't nobody giving you no money and that's what you jealous of too because Sanetta get money, Tariq Nasheed get money and you don't want us to get any money because nobody giving your happy ass a damn thing so that you can go down to the strip club and buy Italian girls or Italian men. I think you're more into Italian men, myself. in a state of emergency. Prejudice. Prejudice. Want a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind.